So it's been five days since a powerful earthquake struck Nepal. More than 5,000 people are killed. Thousands are made homeless. And World Vision has 200 staff working in country as we speak and has begun the response immediately. World Vision US President Rich Stearns is with us for an update. And thank you for joining us, Rich. And it's almost been a week since the earthquake struck Nepal. Can you tell us a little bit? Give us an update. Yeah, well, as we all know, uh, a very powerful earthquake uh, struck Nepal uh, on Saturday. And uh, basically, it's been a, a catastrophe in Kathmandu, but uh, perhaps even more so in some of the rural villages, you know, outlying villages in the mountains. And uh, damage assessments are still going on. We've seen the images on TV. Uh, as you said, tens of thousands have been displaced and homeless. And whenever there's a disaster like this, the, uh, there's an initial trauma. Uh, the building collapses, the, uh, the shock of the earthquake itself, the injuries, uh, traumatic injuries, broken bones, uh, amputations, all kinds of you know, really terrible injuries as people are trapped in buildings. Um, but it doesn't settle down. It actually kind of gets worse because there's a second trauma that occurs when people realize now they're homeless, uh, their food supply has been cut off, their jobs are gone, businesses are shut down, schools are closed, they're living in parks under tarpaulins and tents. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, life as uh, they knew it is gone and, and disrupted. So the second trauma goes on for weeks and months and even has a longer tail than that. And uh, so the second crisis is, uh, just as important to respond to as the initial 48 hours uh, because that's when uh, disease can be rampant, cholera epidemics. After the Haiti earthquake, there was a terrible cholera epidemic, uh, largely because there were no sanitation facilities and, and access to clean water. So that is, those are the conditions that spread cholera. So right now, humanitarian organizations are focused on, uh, yes, the immediate relief, the, the, the treatment of injuries, but uh, shifting very quickly into shelter, food, water purification. Uh, protection of children is a really important thing in the hours and days after a disaster because children are very vulnerable uh, in the region. So it's a terrible situation right now and it's going to continue for weeks and months. Can you tell us a little bit about the people who are impacted, some of the stories that are emerging from the field? Well, yeah, first of all, um, the estimate is that some 8 million people have been affected in some way by this earthquake. Uh, that's the initial estimate, 8 million people. Um, hundreds of thousands are homeless. So, you know, imagine homelessness on a massive scale. Uh, so many homes have been damaged or destroyed. And, and even, uh, even those that have homes that are still standing are reluctant to sleep in the homes because they're afraid of an aftershock. And so you've got tens of thousands of people living out in the open. And, and, and dealing with those situations. Uh, schools and businesses are closed and, 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 uh, and there's a very weak safety net in, uh, in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in terms of the human side of this, uh, statistics tell one story, but you know, we've gotten a report of a, a man that uh, World Vision staff have spoken to. He's 37 years old. He actually lived in a rural village um, miles and miles from Kathmandu. And the morning of the earthquake, he left his village uh, to go uh, on a seven day walk uh, to get into the city for some training and animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a herder. And then the earthquake hit. And uh, he's gotten reports now that 75% of the homes have been destroyed. He's got a wife and four children back in the village. Uh, it's on a hillside, a mountainside, and there were landslides. 75% of the homes were destroyed. Uh, people are foraging in the forest for food because their food supplies were in the homes. Right. Um, he's learned that his wife and children are alive and uninjured, which is good, uh, but the roads have been destroyed too, so he can't even get back to his family. And uh, rescue efforts have been uh, frustrated because the roads are gone and two helicopter attempts have failed to even get into the village uh, to deliver relief supplies. So that village is probably a microcosm of hundreds of villages around uh, the epicenter of the earthquake. Uh, that were deeply destroyed. And I suspect over the days ahead, we're going to start hearing about the stories of these remote villages and, and what happened there. And of course, they're much more inaccessible than the people in the main city of Kathmandu. And, and that's going to be a very difficult place. World Vision works in a lot of the rural areas 
in Nepal. So that's going to be one of our strengths is, is working with people in those villages as we gain access to them again. Now, Rich, you have yourself been in disaster areas and responses and also with the Syria crisis and in our travels there in refugee camps. In this response, tell us a little bit about the details of how World Vision is responding in Nepal. Yeah. Well, first of all, um, we're trying to distribute uh, needed supplies. So cooking kits, tarpaulins, blankets, uh, just basic things that a family would need uh, to get through a few days of, of this crisis. Mm -hmm. Obviously, food distributions will be important as well. Water purification tablets and packets uh, so they can take water that's, uh, that's been contaminated because the water supply has been disruptive uh, and they can, they can purify it. So that'll be one of the first things we do, distributing these uh, supplies to people. And we've got a plane um, that's coming in from Dubai. We have a warehouse in Dubai with relief supplies. We had some relief supplies in country prepositioned for just such a disaster mm -hmm. like this, <clears throat> but others will be arriving by, by plane as they can get into the Kathmandu airport. Um, we will focus on child protection. World Vision is a child-focused agency, so um, we will set up what we call child-friendly spaces. And if you think about thousands and thousands of people disrupted, and what are the children doing, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and what about the trauma that the children have experienced? So we set up these uh, child-friendly spaces. They're almost like little, little schools, uh, temporary schools, where kids can come, and they can start to process their trauma. There'll be counselors there. Uh, they'll be loving staff, caring for them, giving them things to do, coloring and activities and crafts and songs and just things to make them feel like their life can be back to normal a bit. And also this helps parents uh, know that their kids are in a safe place. So as the parents deal with the trauma and their, and their home situation, maybe trying to rebuild or getting things out of their home that's partially collapsed. So child protection and protecting children in this uh, time will be very important. Um, uh, disease prevention, uh, we're going to work very hard at sanitation uh, systems so that we can prevent the secondary disaster of a cholera pandemic or some other kind of infectious disease. And then, uh, as I said earlier, we will be trying to get into the rural uh, villages where they're going to need real help uh, in the days ahead. So focusing on some of the rural areas, which are going to be uh, probably more overlooked as the focus will be on the big cities and uh, so we'll be focusing on the rural areas as we respond as well. Now you had mentioned people rebuilding and in responses with relief recovery tell us a little bit how long will it take for Nepal and World Vision to help in yeah. rebuilding? Well what most people don't realize is uh, the Nepal earthquake will probably disappear from the news in the United States within the next few days um, but the uh, the crisis continues for months and even years. I mean, we're now five years past the Haiti earthquake mm -hmm. and World Vision is still there. Uh, we often say we're the first ones in and the last ones to leave. And w one thing that's important to know about World Vision's uh, relief efforts in Nepal is uh, before the earthquake struck, we had over 200 staff there. We've been there for almost 15 years working in, uh, in Nepal with the communities. Uh, so we had people ready to respond already. Uh, we're sending in a relief team, international relief team of experts in sanitation and hygiene and, and health and food and, and child protection. So they're coming in from all over the world, our relief team. Um, but we've been there for a number of years. Uh, we will be working with the Nepalese people uh, for the next uh, five years, uh, rebuilding from this. And, you know, phase one is just stabilizing the population, getting them shelter, food, water, basic access to health care. Uh, and then we move into a rebuilding and restoration phase where we start to look at how do we get them back into their homes more permanently? Uh, can we build temporary shelters that are more, per well, they're temporary, but they're brick and mortar, you know, maybe places where people can move in. Uh, can we help them in the rebuilding of their homes? Can we provide micro loans to restart some of their businesses? Mm -hmm. I know when the Asian tsunami hit, uh, the whole fishing industry was wiped out because all the boats were destroyed along the shore and World Vision provided loans for fishermen so they could buy new boats and get their fishing businesses started again. So there, there's a lot of work that has to be done over the long haul. This is a marathon and not a sprint. And even though it'll disappear from our news headlines pretty quickly, um, the work in Nepal will go on for, uh, for months and maybe even years to come. And so uh, those give to World Vision or give to organizations like World Vision 
that money will create a fund that hopefully will last us uh, not just through the initial response, but will help us in the rebuilding phase uh, over the next 12 months or so. And our donors and public have been so supportive in their generous outpouring of donations for us to be able to respond so swiftly. What can people do um, to give as far as uh, for continued efforts? Yeah. Well, especially in a, in a situation like this where Nepal is very remote, uh, right. very difficult to get to. Uh, in fact, flights in the airport are severely restricted. So volunteering uh, is not likely if you're an American citizen, unless you've got some very specific technical skills. Mm -hmm. um, so the best way to help is to give. I mean, organizations need cash to do this work. It's expensive to do. Supplies have to be bought. Uh, airplanes have to be leased to, to fly in these supplies. Uh, staff have to be deployed uh, to the region, and uh, cash is very important. So if you're an individual, you can you can give. You can go to our websites and give. Um, uh, we have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, so if you're one of those people that wants to get a whole network of friends to give to this crisis, we've got peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools that you can use. If you're a church, uh, this is a great thing for a church to do, to take an offering or, or, or send a gift uh, to help the people of Nepal. Uh, we have a whole church resource website that pastors and church leaders can go to to download things for their bulletin inserts and uh, photographs and, and, and even videos that are available. Uh, so really, we, we urge people to give and, and to help in that way because uh, when we run out of money, we run out of fuel, right? You know, we, we can only do as much as the money allows us to do, and that's just the reality. Well, thank you very much, Rich, for sharing this update with us. For people who would like to do more or find out more, please go to worldvision.org or text 44888. And we just thank you very much and thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sabelle.